Hi, I'm Sharon with Fantastic Learning Toys and I'm busy preparing for a homeschool expo. I thought I would take time for a video with information from Carson DeLosa regarding their interactive notebooks. Then I'll offer some ideas for use of these notebooks for homeschool. See you soon. Carson DeLosa's new interactive notebooks help teachers save time and help students become active, engaged learners. It truly offers a unique and personalized form of note taking. Our series includes math and language arts books for grades K through 5. Each 96 page book includes more than 30 grade appropriate lessons. Each lesson includes an instructional teacher page and reproducible pieces that students will use to assemble the right hand side of their notebooks. A reflection activity for students to apply the skills taught during the lesson is suggested for the left-hand page. The hands-on nature of these interactive notebooks is integral for success. For example, instead of memorizing shape names, students can cut shapes, glue them into their notebooks, and write about each shape in a way that helps them remember it. Our ready-to-use books include nine how-to teacher pages, which makes transitioning your classroom into an interactive learning environment easy. This instructional strategy promotes organization and study skills for increased student achievement. So teach standard-based skills in an engaging way that empowers students with Carson DeLos's interactive notebook series. Hi, my name is Carrie Walters and I'm with Carson DeLosa. Thank you for joining me as we talk about the setup, organization, and management of interactive notebooks. Interactive notebooks are a unique, hands-on, and personalized form of note-taking. They allow teachers to guide their students through creating pages of notes on new topics. These notes often include drawings, diagrams, and 3D elements, making the material understandable and relevant for students. And since students are encouraged to complete their notebook pages in ways that make sense to them, no two pages are exactly the same. Interactive notebooks also allow students to be active participants in their learning. Teachers can easily differentiate the pages to address the individual needs of their students. And the interactive, easily personalized format makes these resources ideal for engaging students in learning new concepts. They are also the perfect resource to use as reference and review throughout the year. To get started, begin by laying out a general plan for the topics that you plan to cover in each notebook throughout the year. To do this, refer to your scope and sequence or your standards. Keeping in mind the notebook will become an anchor for the standards you're teaching throughout the year. Next, you'll want to choose the type of notebook you want your students to use. Interactive notebooks are usually single subject, spiral bound notebooks composition books, or three ring binders with loose leaf paper. The type of notebook you choose is based on your own personal preference, and each comes with its own pros and cons. For example, spiral notebooks can be folded in half, page size is larger, and they're inexpensive. However, pages can easily fall out, spirals can snag or become misshapen, and the page count and size vary widely. With composition notebooks, pages don't easily fall out, and the page size and page count are standard. However, notebooks cannot be folded in half, and the page size is smaller. For binders with loose leaf paper, pages can be easily added, moved, or removed. Pages can be removed individually for grading, and you can add full page printed handouts. However, pages can easily fall out, the pages aren't as durable, and they're more expensive than a spiral notebook. After choosing your notebook type, you'll want to allow students to personalize their notebook cover. Having students decorate their notebooks provides them with a sense of pride and ownership. It also emphasizes the personalized nature of the notebook itself. Once the notebooks are decorated, begin by having students number their pages and create a table of contents. Have students number the bottom outside corner of each page, front and back. This way, after completing a new page, Adding a table of contents entry will be easy. Based on your preference, either the first or the third page of each notebook can be the table of contents. 
If you plan to include your grading rubric in the student's notebook, it's a good idea to start the table of contents on page 3 of the notebook. Have students title the top of the page and then leave about four pages so that your students have plenty of space to add to their table of contents throughout the year. Another great idea is to attach a large library pocket to the inside front cover to store notebook pieces in case students run out of time or you plan on carrying an activity over to the next day. Now you and your students are ready to start creating the pages. Remember to always begin a new page by adding an entry to the table of contents. The key to a successful interactive notebook is good modeling and constant reinforcement. So it's a good idea to create the first notebook pages along with your students to model proper format and reinforce expectations. As you think about the organization of the interactive notebooks, here are a few non-content pages you may want to add. The title page is helpful for quickly identifying notebooks. It's especially helpful if you're using notebooks for a number of different subjects. Students can add their full name, subject area, teacher's name, and anything else you find important. As we've already discussed, the table of contents is integral to the success of the notebook. It makes referencing previously created pages quick and easy for students. Make sure you leave several pages at the beginning of the notebook for the table of contents. I like to put my rubric right up front so that students and parents both understand my expectations and are familiar with how I will be grading the notebooks. A unit title page is helpful if you're going to organize your notebook by units of study. Consider using a single page at the beginning of each section to separate it. You can also consider color coding your table of contents based on those units. It's a good idea to reserve a six-page section at the back of the notebook where students can create a glossary. Draw a line to split the front and the back of each page into halves, creating 24 sections. Combine Q and R and Y and Z to fit the entire alphabet. Have students add their vocabulary words as they're introduced. Now that your notebooks are set up and organized, let's talk about how to format the content pages. Since interactive notebooks are usually viewed with notebooks open flat, you have several options for how to treat the left side and the right side pages. Traditionally, the right side is used for the teacher-directed part of the lesson, or the input, and the left side is used for the students to interact with the lesson content, or the output. However, you may prefer to switch the order. It's also important to include the standards, learning objectives, or essential questions in interactive notebooks. You may choose to write these on the top left side of each page before completing the teacher-directed page on the right side. Another option is to have students include an introduction or preview of the lesson on the top left page to show what they know. You would then move to the right-hand side of the page for the teacher-directed lesson and then back to the left side of the page for the student reflection on learning. This is the in, through, out method. This chart will help you with the different types of items and activities that you could include on each side. Regardless of how you set up, organize, or teach with our interactive notebooks, I hope that you will find them to be a valuable resource for building critical thinking skills, differentiating instruction, and improving teacher, parent, and student communication. Thank you for taking the time to watch Carson DeLosa's information on interactive notebooks. Interactive notebooks can be used by themselves for homeschool, but are well suited as companions with other resources. Since Carson DeLosa developed Interactive Notebooks and Spectrum, we are using Spectrum as a reference for linking interactive notebooks and other resources together in homeschooling. Each interactive notebook starts by providing basic information that you saw in the previous clips about setting up and organizing the notebooks. Here you see an explanation of what are interactive notebooks. In the Getting Start section for homeschooling, where more than one resource is being used, I suggest using binders with loose leaf paper so that practice handouts and materials can easily be inserted. As mentioned in the teacher training segment, it is personal preference in handling the right and left side of the notebook. 
Planning for the year requires forethought when linking interactive notebooks with other resources. It is probably best to have all the resources on hand while planning. It may even be a good idea with them organized in a separate binder that can easily be used to provide handouts when needed later. As you will see in a minute, with Spectrum, the practice pages and tests are colorful, reproducible pages. The Managing Interactive Notebooks in the Classroom and Grading Rubik are intended for a classroom environment. For homeschooling, these can be adjusted to personal expectations. At this point, the notebook begins dealing with the learning materials. Again, formatting the left and right side is personal preference. When working with multiple resources, I suggest listing on the left side the pages from each resource that is relating to the topic covered by this section of the interactive notebook. How this area is handled relies on whether training is handled through hands-on teaching, giving reading assignments, or other forms of structured teaching. I'm going to assume the parent has chosen a personalized, hands-on approach to teaching. Although other resources may be used instead, I'm going to proceed forward with using Spectrum Complete Practice and Prep Workbooks and Flashcards Kit by Carson DeLosa. For more than 15 years, Carson DeLosa's best-selling Spectrum series has been a parent and teacher favorite. Spectrum's rigorous standards-aligned content delivers academic success by teaching and reinforcing important skills as well as providing additional practice. Spectrum Complete Practice and Prep Comprehensive Grade Level Kit includes a 320-page practice workbook, a 128-page test prep workbook, and 204 two-sided math flashcards. The practice workbook provides everything your students need to build proficiency in math, language arts, and reading practice. The activities include math, sentence structure, grammar, and usage. It's also perfect for college and career readiness. The 128-page test prep workbook prepares your students for year-end assessment success by helping them master test-taking skills. Students will learn general and subject-specific test-taking strategies they can apply to language arts and math practice test items. The skill-specific practice will also help them to think critically while proving their reasoning. And the two-sided math flashcards are perfect for practicing important skills, anytime, any place. So give your student the resources they need to succeed with Spectrum Complete Practice and Prep. Thank you for taking time to watch this video, and I hope you found it informative. You can find these and other great products on our website, www.fantasticlearningtoys.com. I wish you and your child a happy and enriching future as you travel down the infinite roads of knowledge.